Those who have seen the Hoover Dam face to face would describe it as one of the most unbelievable dams in the world. Even those who have never visited the site in person can vouch for the dam's reputation. With a height that's equal to a 60-story building, the Hoover Dam is one of the largest man-made structures in the United States and was the highest dam in the world when it was completed all the way back in 1935. Built during the Great Depression on the Colorado River, the Hoover Dam has since then established itself as an important part of America's infrastructure and a representation of technological know-how. With enough water to irrigate roughly 2 million acres, the Hoover Dam doesn't just look powerful, it is powerful. In this video, we're going to take you through the history of the Hoover Dam and see exactly why it's the most protected dam in America. The construction of the Hoover Dam began in 1931. Even before it was built, you could see that this dam was going to be larger than any structure anyone had seen before. The Hoover Dam, as impressive and beautiful as it may be, was originally built out of necessity. At the start of the 20th century, farmers living by the Colorado River had attempted to divert its waters to the towns nearby using man-made canals. But in 1905, tragedy struck. The river water violently rose out of the canals, leading to extensive flooding of the rich, irrigated farmlands in the area. This caused damage to thousands of acres of fertile, crop-bearing land. Over the next 20 years, Congress spent over $10 million hoping to protect Imperial Valley farmers from floods. During this time, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, along with its reclamation engineers, started studying the Colorado River as a potential site to build a dam. They started off by building smaller dams on the river's tributaries, but soon enough, the overall consensus was that building a larger dam would be the best way to supply the surrounding areas with water for irrigation while also protecting them from floods. The Hoover Dam would also do more than just protect and mitigate flood risks. It would also be a source of generating hydroelectric power for the country's homes, businesses, and factories. The construction of the dam was such an enormous undertaking that an entire city was fabricated in Nevada to house over 5,000 workers. This new city was given the name Boulder City. Boulder City became a North Star for unemployed men who had traveled to the construction site in hopes of finding work. With at least 3,500 people working on the project in a single day, it was easy to understand why workers were relocating to Boulder City. Over its four-year construction period, a total of 21,000 men would end up participating in the dam's construction. Boulder City was situated on federally owned land and had no elected officials. The city was run by an employee of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and was eventually incorporated into the federal government in 1960. The dam's overall height would need to be 726.4 feet in order to keep the deadly pressure of the river away from the citizens. The dam was built to be 660 feet thick at the base and tapers to 45 feet thick at the top. For decades, its reservoir was the largest artificial lake in the world and is still the largest in the United States to this day. The huge volume of water stored in the reservoir weighed so much that it deformed the Earth's crust, causing more than 600 small earthquakes in the late 1980s. Bet you didn't know that, right? An engineer named Frank Crow was in charge of the project. Crow was given seven years to complete the task. If the project wasn't complete within this timeline, Crow would be charged approximately $3,000 a day in financial penalties. During this project, Crow was given the nickname Hurry Up Crow due to his ability to ensure the project was unfolding on time and on budget. In order to create a construction site on the riverbed, four diversion tunnels were driven through the canyon walls, two on the Nevada side and two on the Arizona side. These tunnels had to be sturdy enough to handle the power of the Colorado River, which meant packing the tunnels with dynamite and drilling each hole individually. However, this was a slow and tedious process that wasted precious time. 
A more efficient process was adopted. Specialized 10-ton trucks were brought in, holding 50 men on board. Each truck would run 24 to 30 drills at one time. These trucks would be backed up along the walls of the tunnel, allowing for half the wall to be drilled at a time. With eight of these trucks and 500 drills, it's no surprise that the job was finished ahead of schedule. The next step was to construct the dam's power plant and four intake towers. For that, buckets of concrete were carried across the canyon via cableways as workers sprayed the drying concrete blocks to keep them moist. 600 miles of pipe loops were also embedded within the concrete blocks to help circulate water through the dam, keeping the concrete cool. Finally, on September 30, 1935, the dam was commemorated by President Herbert Hoover. After the dam was constructed, there was plenty of controversy regarding its name. Before its construction, the dam was referred to as the Boulder Canyon Project, since initially it was to be built on the floors of the Boulder Canyon. However, the project was later shifted to the Black Canyon instead. Somehow, the name Boulder Dam stuck around even then. The Secretary of Interior at the time, Ray Lyman Wilbur, took it upon himself to officially name the dam after President Hoover. This decision by Wilbur was met with anger and contention. Many citizens believed that Hoover was directly responsible for the Great Depression, which did not earn Hoover the reputation of being a fan favorite with Americans. Despite Wilbur's renaming of the dam, most reporters and locals would still refer to the dam as Boulder Dam. Regardless of the citizens' distaste in the naming of it, any official documents of congressional appropriation bills labeled the site as the Hoover Dam. The security that surrounds the Hoover Dam is a story of its own. Many do not know the measures that were taken to maintain the dam's safety and existence during the Second World War. The truth is that when the Hoover Dam was completed, it emerged as one of America's largest national assets and displays of manpower. At the same time, this meant that it was vulnerable to attempted attacks and sabotage by foreign enemies. During this time, the dam was providing electrical power to Southern California, home of some of the nation's biggest defense plants. These plants would assist in providing planes, tanks, and other armaments on a round-the-clock basis. As Hitler's violent aggression accelerated in Europe, and the Japanese army marched against its neighbors across the Pacific, reclamation and even the public became more sensitive to possible enemy threats towards the dam. Many visitors expressed concern about sabotage and wondered what precautions were being taken to prevent it. As a result, the U.S. War Department stepped in and outfitted the dam with a myriad of security measures to ensure that any important information or paperwork regarding the construction plans of the dam weren't leaked out. Visitors and employees at the dam were also considered to be potential threats and were not allowed to carry suitcases, parcels, etc. when they were on site. Floodlights were installed to illuminate the channel above the intake towers. It is rumored that a wire net was hung from a cable across the lake, making it impossible for boats to get within 300 feet of the intake towers. All of this was done secretly in order to keep these security tactics safe. In February of 1940, the War Department received threats that the dam was in danger. The electric stations were at risk of being blasted. As a result, additional gates, barriers, and doors were ordered at various strategic locations, and a scheme was developed to install heavy wire fencing on the surrounding cliffs. In mid-June, the FBI conducted its security training at Hoover Dam for 149 men. The U.S. Army announced that it planned to establish a cantonment with a force of some 800 men in or near Boulder City to protect Hoover Dam. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, the dam was closed to visitors for the rest of the war and was finally reopened in 1945. These security measures have extended to this day, with the dam practically being a city in itself, with its own police force, along with specialized security systems designed to prevent any damages. In addition to the Hoover Dam Police Force, the dam employs additional contract security personnel to man vehicle checkpoints on the Nevada and Arizona entrance points. And since the attacks on 9-11, there are now several checkpoints that you must pass through in order to reach the actual dam. 
even if it is just for a casual visit. But why exactly is the Hoover Dam the most protected dam in America? Well, to put it simply, the Hoover Dam has created the country's largest reservoir. Not only does it cover roughly 248 square miles and is capable of holding some 28.9 million acre feet of water, the dam also supplies water to farms, businesses, and homes all over California, Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico. The dam has been able to meet all the goals it was constructed for, which included prevention of floods, irrigation, and the creation of hydropower. Its 17 turbines generate enough electricity to power 1.3 million homes. Since its construction, the dam has been a National Historic Landmark and was dubbed one of America's seven modern civil engineering wonders in 1994. Over seven million people visit the dam every year to experience this feat of engineering. Considering all of this, the Hoover Dam has been one of America's greatest displays of engineering, technology, and growth, and has played an enormous role in supporting the expansion of its region. How do you feel about the work that went into the construction and then protection of this dam? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and tune in next time.